according to uh, Lutheran mass, three beanies equal one beach ball. <laughs> so if any of your kids got shortchanged, uh, please let me know. Also, we have a new lady in the, the nursery now, the sister of actually Jade, who went to college. So Maya's back there if you need any help with your kids or just go back and introduce yourself. So it's Maya, and she is uh, our caretaker now too. So, hey, nice. There. So the other day I walked into Charter Hall and there was a mother signing up her son to park here. He's a student at Sandberg and they couldn't make the meeting so they came in during the week and she and her son were at the table and I just walked through there and I thought I just introduced myself and I said, I'm Don, the minister of the church, looking forward to having you park here. And then she looks at me and she says, don't you remember me? And I said, no. <laughs> she said, well, you were my soccer coach when I was in junior high. She's now 46. <laughs> and uh, I said, I remember those days. I said, I wasn't a very good coach. And she said, I know you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, you were a lot of fun. It made me realize, you know, where does the time go? My gosh, it just sometimes goes so fast. There are times when it goes slow, but it seems lately it seems to move fast. And occasionally I'll get a call, and maybe from one of you, and they'll say, well, Don, I, uh, I hate to bother you because I know you're busy. Well, busy is my least favorite word in the world. And I think to myself, what's the point of living if people don't want to bother you? I mean, we all have 24 hours in the day, and most of us have some control over how we use those 24 hours. I feel kind of bad for people who don't have that choice anymore, where everybody has to do something for them 24 hours a day. And the other day, I had a funeral for a 62-year-old gentleman. And uh, the family calls me, and I, I talk to them, and they say, well, we're an Irish Catholic family. And I said, yeah. It's not my fault. <laughs> And our Irish Catholic priest is unavailable. So they had me call you, a Swedish Lutheran. And so when I get up to the pulpit to preach, I mean, he's 62 years old. And the place is absolutely packed. Popular, lots of friends and family. And I said, first of all, I apologize for being Swedish and Lutheran. But, and then I thought to myself, and I said, you know, your loved one here is 62 years old. I'm pushing 75. And it's just not fair. And they kind of nod. And it kind of broke the ice. And I was also thinking of a family that we prayed for many times over the past two years. And uh, the son and her daughter-in-law were getting married and engaged. And she's right in the middle of a battle with cancer. And, uh, but they decided to get married anyway. But ultimately, uh, the next couple of weeks, she's probably going to reach the finish line. So their married life isn't lasting very long. And that's not fair. It's not fair at all. And yet, the two of them didn't let cancer get in the way of what they wanted to do. In the midst of the unfairness of life, they decided to live boldly. And they got married. And they love each other. And they leave behind a legacy of love and goodness. And you know, I certainly don't understand God's ways, and if you've listened to me preach for the last 45, 50 years, you know that I don't understand God's ways. Isaiah says this in the lessons that Brenda just read. God says, my thoughts are not like your thoughts, that's to be sure. And my ways are different than your ways. And as the heavens are above the earth, my ways and thoughts are above your thoughts. My word is like the snow and the rain that comes down to cover the earth and plant seeds. And now your calling is to take those seeds and make something grow. Like you did eight years ago. Planting seeds, making them grow. Share your journey and make a difference in the lives of other people that have somewhat the same journey you do. You see, God's word and God's spirit, they plant the seeds, but God doesn't do it all for us. We have to take those seeds and somehow make it happen in the way we treat others. I often go to see Peggy's mom in memory care. And I walk in there and I see all the wheelchairs. 
and I see all the people sleeping on the couch or in their chairs, and, and I talk to her mom, and she talks a lot, a lot about stuff that makes absolutely no sense at all. And then I realize it may not make sense to me, but maybe it makes sense to her. She's free to talk. Somebody is there. So Don, don't be so quick to turn the knob, even though life is unfair. And as I left her the other day, there's a lady next to her who was sleeping in her chair. And she, I held her hand and I squeezed her hand and she woke up and she smiled. And I told her, I said, and I don't even know if she heard me. I said, ma'am, there is something on the other side of this journey. And the day will come when you'll be able to walk on water. And that's the gospel for today. The disciples are in the boat, there's thunder, there's rain, and all of a sudden Jesus is walking on the water towards them in the midst of the thunder and the rain and the storm. And Peter says, Jesus, let me walk with you. And so Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking on the water. He sees the thunder, he sees the harshness around him, and he doubts and he begins to sink. And Jesus reached down and pulls him out of the water. And I realize that uh, Peter is me. Sometimes I see the thunder, I see the storm, I begin to doubt, I question. I lose my passion, I lose my direction, and I begin to sink. And somehow Jesus reaches out his hand, that higher power, and begins pulling me out of the water. And I realize that in the midst of life's unfairness, in the midst of all the doubts, we begin to sink. And yet somehow, some way, there's a higher power that helps us get out of the water. And we don't always walk on the water, but somebody walks it with us, even when we sink. We're not Jesus. And we doubt and we get preoccupied and there are times when my needs become the most important thing in the world. But when I step back and allow Jesus' spirit to speak to me, Somehow, some way, we can walk on the water in the midst of all the storms and the harshness around us. And there are times when we need to be humble enough to let somebody else pull us out of the water. And there are times when we need to realize that our arms and our hands are Jesus' hands, and we need to pull others out of the water. You know, I uh, can't imagine what it was like for you, Nick, eight years ago when you made that big step. I think about Noah's that organization that rescues pets and all of a sudden they find themselves with not enough money and they have to reach out and people like us can respond. I cannot imagine what it's like to be in Ukraine or Maui. I can't imagine what it's like to say goodbye to somebody you just married. And I think of all the people in this room even that you live every day with anxiety and doubt and depression. And somehow, some way, you know that you can't walk that journey by yourself. We try to walk on water, and we do it for a while. When we start sinking, there's someone there to help pull us out. And the doubts don't go away, but they don't bury us. They don't control us. One of you asked me once, do you believe in reincarnation? I don't know. I'm not sure I want to come back again. <laughs> but if I do come back again, I know one thing. I'll try to be a better soccer coach. <laughs> and wherever we are, and whatever happens on the other side, We'll never walk this journey alone. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed.